So when we're thinking about identifying linear functions, this is what example one is with your in your book. If you take a picture, a look at those three graphs that are there, we're going to ask ourselves two questions. One, is it a function? And two, is it a linear function? These are pretty easy to tell when it's on a graph. And I'm going to put my book underneath the camera so we can look at these two, or these three graphs. Keeping those three questions in mind, first question, is it a function? And we just have to think about the vertical line test. If I run a vertical line down through this graph, an invisible pretend vertical line, it's only going to touch this graph line how many times? Once. So it is a function. The second question is, is it a linear function? Does it make a straight line? Yes. So this one is a linear function. It's a function because it passes a vertical line test. It's also a linear function because it's a straight line. What about example two? It's not a linear function, but it is a function. So this one, in answering this question, would get a yes and a yes. This would get a yes and a no. It passes the vertical line test, but is it a straight line? No. This one was graphed with an exponent. This is an x squared something. That's how we get that parabola. What about undefined? Undefined. It does not pass the vertical line test. Stop saying the bad word, guys. If you get no to the first question, you don't ask the second question. If it's not a function, it cannot be a linear function, even though it's a straight line. I'm not just saying, did you find a straight line? I'm asking, is it a linear function? That's a specialized version of a function. If it's not a function, it can't be a linear function. So linear function basically says, is it a straight line, but it has to be a function? First question, is it a function? Second question, if that first one is yes, is it a linear function? So let's look at these three examples at the bottom of your page. Does this pass the vertical line test? So this is a function. Is it a straight line? This is a yes and a yes. What about this one? Yes. Yes. Because it passes the vertical line test and it is a straight line. The difference with this is it has zero slope. Make sense? What about this one? No. Does not pass the vertical line test, so we don't even ask if it's a straight line or not, which it's not. It's not a function or a linear function, so you would just put no. Thumbs up if that makes sense? Excellent. Okay, I'd like you now to take a look at the top of 301. You can also tell if it's a function by looking at the ordered pairs in a table. In this case, we have a table where the x's all have a pattern of going up by 1, and the y's all have a pattern of going down by 3. That's a function, and it's a linear function. Because it's going, the x's are going one specific up, 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 and the y's are going another down, 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 in the same amount, it makes it a function, a linear function. Yeah. It's the lowest rate. What's that? The date, the level. Yes. Twelve. Oh. Um, on this table, we can look. The X's are all going up by one, but what's going on with the Y's? There's constant changing in that set. It's not going up or down by the same amount. And this is actually the graph that it would end up making. It is a function, but is it a linear function? Okay, so let's take a look at number two, example two. If you're given a set of ordered pairs, there's two things you can do to find out if it's a function and a linear function. You can graph it. If you get a function that passes the vertical line test and it's a straight line, you know it's a linear function, which you can do. 
There's a simpler way though, without having to graph a bunch of stuff. If you take ordered pairs, and let's take the set that's at the very bottom of your page. Can't see. Thank you. Do you see down there the check it out? Where it says three comma five, five comma four. Do you guys see where I'm getting those numbers? Let's write that set of ordered pairs into an XY table and see if we can see a pattern. Because again, I could take those and I could graph them, or I could just put them in an XY table and see what patterns emerge. What's happening with my X's? I heard somebody say it. It's going up by two. Is it consistently going up by two? As long as we can see that each one of them is going up by two, we're on our way to finding out if this is a function, a linear function. What's going on with these? They're going down by one. So our pattern on the Y's is negative one. <laughs> Everybody's going to watch this video and be like, what were they laughing at? Did she make a face? No, somebody in the hallway was being weird. Okay, is this a linear function? As long as we can see that it, the pattern in the X's stays consistent in all the X's and the pattern in the Y's stays consistent in all the Y's, then it is a linear function. Okay, <clears throat> probably the most important part of your notes today. We have what are called linear equations. You already know one of them. How do I finish this? As long as that M is not an exponent, we can't have this or an absolute value, so not these things. If it's just a straight number that's in there for the slope, it's a linear equation. And we call this one slope-intercept. Then there's another equation that you guys are going to get really familiar with. It's called standard form. And they're actually related to each other. AX plus BY equals C. And I purposely make the A, B, C uppercase and the X and Y lowercase. We will work with this more next week, but you need to know the AX here is the same as the MX here. Because the X is attached to it, when we move this equation into this format to graph with it, this and this are the same. Anybody want to guess what goes with the C in Y equals MX plus B? This question. Is this going to be like the Pythagorean theorem? I'll come back to that. The C in this equation is your B. It's not attached to the X or the Y. The Y is here, but when we get it into this equation, we've divided away the B. Because right now it's being multiplied by the B, and to get it alone over here, we'll do this a lot next week. I just want to let you know. They're basically the same equation. One is like printing and the other is cursive. It's the same, just written differently. And I'll show you how to move things around next week. Just keep that in your head. So box this off because you've known this one already. This one's going to become your new bestie as far as equations go. And now we're moving on to example three. And if you look in your book on 302, you will see that they have given us an equation, y is equal to x plus 3. 
And in these kinds of problems, you're going to be asked to determine if it is a linear function and if it is to make a table and come up with ordered pairs and graph it. This is in y equals mx plus b form, isn't it? Mm -hmm. What's the rule? x plus 3. So we're going to make an xy table with the rule in the middle. And we're going to put in some values for x. I like to use negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Now I've come up with those numbers. They're going up by 1. So, so far we know we have a function. And then we're going to plug in all of the values I made up for the x into our equation, or into our table. Negative 2 plus 3, negative 1 plus 3, and this is what you're going to graph on our cute little stamped graph that you made. Negative 2 plus 3 would be? 1. one. Negative 1 plus 3 would be? 2. two. <coughs> 0 plus 3? Three. 3. Then 4 and one. 5. And then we can graph those. Negative 2 comma 1. That's our ordered pair. Negative 2 comma 1 would be here. Negative 1 comma 2 would be here, 0 and 3, 1 and 4, and 2 and 5. And I get my straight line. Is my slope positive or negative? Positive. positive which makes sense because this x is positive. There's no negative in front of it, and that's where our slope came from. Anybody want to guess what our slope is based on what you've done the last couple days? It is positive. It's 1. It's 1 over 1. That's why there's nothing in front of the x, because it, when it's 1, it's invisible. Okay, so with that, I have a few practice problems which you guys are easily going to get done in class. I also have your test to give back to you, and I have a math challenge for you. Wait, who won the thingy? thingy? What one thingy? The thing that you said that average that's for finals. But well, that's for the final. Is that, oh. is that a phone number? But I would guess. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not giving you my phone number. That would be awkward. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't write page numbers up here all the time. Okay, um, so a handful of problems. You guys can use my stamp when you have to graph them or this extra graph paper by the door. Page 304 to 305, numbers 15 through 24, and then 30 to 33. About eight of those need to be graphed. On the board over here, you will see my 2018 challenge. On Monday, people will be allowed, or Tuesday when we get back, people will be allowed to start writing on it. My challenge is for you guys to find as many of the numbers between 1 and 100, including 1 and 100, that can be made using the digits from this year. So you would use 2, 0, 1, and 8, add, subtract, multiply, divide, exponents, fractions, factorials, everything that you know works. Can we combine a number like zero and they one? They are digits. They're digits. So you can't say eight, one and eight are 18, but you can say one plus eight is nine. Times two. Times two plus zero. Okay? I will be giving you guys your test back.